You are. You that, right? You're a you piece of meat. Oh yeah. Tomorrow. So we're meeting the owners in Paris, the three of us are, and then um, and then we're going the next day to Grenoble. So so we f we're leaving at like I'm gonna pick you guys up at like what time? I'm gonna pick you up at five ten. And then we'll get five thirty. You will be picking him up. I'll be driving by then. Yeah. I'm picking you up at five thirty. Be ready for five thirty tomorrow morning. Are you going through Starbucks on the way through? Hey, no, 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 just Starbucks. Just, just, you just sit at the end. Some, I will not be driving. It's something different for the Cardiff Devils in the month of November, with a break from normal action to play in the IIHF Continental Cup. And then uh, I think like the numbers, the crowd, I, I think we have like 300 fans going or something like that. Yeah, there is. It's going to be awesome. There's 300 fans going. That's going to be awesome. I know. I think it's going to be great. Next we got Blame it on him. With some of the staff leaving early in the week, the players leave Thursday with a quick bus ride to Bristol with a trip away, a chance for the team to get a break from normality. It's really important to, for you know the group to get away together at certain points of the year and doing it that early, I think uh, we, all, we already have such a close group, but it just uh, brings you that bit closer together and you, you experience different things. You know, it could be funny things from the food to the, to the different culture, but uh, we're all, uh, all in it together. Yeah, I think it's good to kind of break up the regular routine of the year. Um, it's nice to get away with the guys, a bit of bonding time, so those trips are always fun. Yeah, it was cool for me. I've never been to Europe, so it was cool to get over to France. I like these trips to visit new places and see different scenery. And then obviously with the guys all together, it's a uh, good like team builder. What? From Bristol is a quick flight to Geneva. Nice, obviously our schedule here is a lot of back-to-backs, quick travel, so uh, it's a great time to get to know the boys a little bit more, have some fun and uh, get away from uh, normal life. And from there, a bus ride through the dark to Grenoble, with the first stop, the Patinoir Pole Sud, to get straight on the ice for practice. While the players arrive, it's time for Sam Duggan to show his appreciation for where the equipment manager Tom Murdy has put his seat for the weekend. For other players, it's a chance to check out the rink, including just how high the benches and boards are. Look at that when you're oh my god. Look at that Coxie. When you're down here, you can jump. While the players prepare for practice, the staff have a little competition of their own, aiming pucks at the center circle. Hang on a second. Where's Ali filming? Apparently you're meant to practice. Yeah. Apparently you're meant to be a professional hockey player. Today's my off day. The team get in a quick practice with their first game less than 24 hours away. Coming over for the road. That'll do it. That'll do it, Ollie. A 4 p.m. face-off means the team don't have much time to explore the city, with the bus departing just after lunch to prepare for their opening game against Kazakh side Nomad Astana. And just as the team make their way to the bus, they're greeted by the team owners who've just arrived in town. With the team arriving, it's time to check equipment, but for others, it's time to check exactly how some equipment is used, namely a new coffee machine. You know how to work this? Yeah, you press the middle. What do you want? Coffee? Middle button? Press the middle? Yeah. Press the middle and then it'll, 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 it'll,
with almost 300 Devils fans arriving for the game, Pete Russell gets the room ready. So you just go with the national team, really, you know, what you're laughing at us. Laughing. After the first training session, you see them all watching and laughing at us. It was a, a group to go in, a group to go to school, like, just like looking at us as just a piece of shit. We're going to go medal that year. So the biggest thing is, I'm going to warn you once don't us to underestimate young teams like this. Because they'll just keep coming and coming and working hard and they won't give up because they're trying to get a job. 17 years old to 23, they're trying to get a job. They want out of that country. Otherwise, it was like a KHL team. So you have to treat them with the respect that you deserve, you know what I mean? Because it's not been an easy game. There's no easy game. It's never happens like that. Let's make, bring our best boys. Let's make this a really good little trip. You understand? Yeah. Right. And good trips come from winning. Let's go. Yeah. 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 Winning this month. Starting off right, boys. Let's go. 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 We got Marty. Go! We got Wheel. Go! We got Moser. Go! We got Crow. Go! Bouncy in the yeah. Just before the action, there's only a small window to stay loose. And for defenseman River Rimsha, unique handshakes do just the trick. Hey, really, really, really nice to see you. I'm Scooby. I'm Melted. Scooby. Well, it's kind of like. A lot of them happen just organically, right? Um, obviously, I've had my one with Wolves when we played together in Slovakia. Um, so that stuck around. Um, and then the other stuff, like the one I had with Arnie, just kind of happened. And we inter uh, combined a little bit of a TV show that we liked together. And then the one with Donnie um, and Wolves, that we saw that from uh, the baseball outfielders. I think it was the Atlanta Braves. They did that after uh, one of their wins. So we kind of just stole that from them. And then... Uh, with the pregame drinks, that's just, again, one of those things that just ha kind of happens organically. Intro over, puck down, the action's underway. Both sides battle early, and the Devils get the best looks on net, but can't solve Nikita Boyakin, who makes stop after stop in the opening 20 minutes. At the other end of the ice, while the quieter of the two goalies, Ben Bowers pulls out some saves of his own. I think um, that we go just like any other weekend, really, go into any game, just like it would any game at home, any game away, it's, it's the same thing. It's, and that's what you got to be, you got to be consistent with everything, obviously. During games, the same thing never happens twice. Uh, it's, no matter how good you feel, how bad you feel, every game's different. While the Devils pressed on, nothing could find Twine, and with neither side able to break the deadlock, it remained goalless after 20 minutes. That's a great stop, boys. Really good. He's going to make a few good saves. He's a good goalie, but keep that traffic there. As the period went on, traffic died off. And trust me, like, when you guys had traffic at the start, you created everything. Loads of shit. Get back in front of that net. Obviously, goalies, you have to be leaders, right? I mean, uh, we, <laughs> we kind of the only guy on the team where every mistake costs a goal, right? Uh, it's very rare that we make a mistake and it doesn't cost us a goal. Um, so, I mean, we, we have to kind of shoulder that responsibility. I think anyone who does shoulder that, that type of kind of monumental uh, responsibility has to show leadership, right? And obviously now I'm an older person in the group as well. I'm not, I'm not the youngest anymore. And uh, even when I was young, I had to kind of lead a little bit and you leave on the back. The net was there and I was like, what? Yeah. I was gone. When I was waiting for that, no, I was like, I'm trying to let the green slot and the slot goes down. By the time I was shooting, I was like, this. You're playing well, there's nothing wrong with it. All the shots came in the power play. They've got a good power play. You just keep pounding it off, boys. If you keep moving the puck fast and have good execution, it's coming. It's not a problem. You need a period to get going. It's when you come in the road and fights it. That's what happens. You know what I mean? It's a travel day. It's a good period. You're shot in 20 shots to six or something. But we've got to get final way. It's dawn. Panic, but the one thing is, you got to keep the levels up. Do you understand what I mean? Don't switch off. Keep playing. But you know what? This guy, you got to stop hitting him in the belly. He's coming out. He's down. Think about it. Change your point of attack. That makes sense. Try something. Don't just try something. Shoot quicker. And the last thing, don't pass into coverage. You're passing into five guys sometimes. Don't take your time. We've been in these situations before. It's fine. All right, let's go one to beat. Yeah, 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 yeah. With the team talk done. The Devils would hope for a strong second period. However, Astana seemed to find another gear. An early strike from Oleg Boyko saw the Kazakh side take the lead, and 10 minutes later, Ruslan Ospinov doubled it. 
Down by two, the Devils didn't quit. A shot from the point saw Ben Davis redirect the puck past the goalie to make it a one goal game. But while the Devils didn't quit, nor did Astana. Maxim Morosov reopened the two-goal cushion before another quick strike for the Devils, this time to Cole Yuli, meant the Devils trailed 3-2 after 40 minutes. Like even a change at the end, it's just f***ing lazy, it's not being here. The goals we shouldn't give up, the terrible goals, you know, you, you won the period. Down by one, the next goal could make the difference, and when that goal came for Astana to Diaz Kasainov, it made the Devils' task that much harder. Follow that up with back-to-back -back penalties, the Devils gave themselves a mountain to climb when Nikita Kolobov tacked on Astana's fifth of the night. A pushback followed. Evan Mosey gave the Devils life and with Ben Bowles on the bench for the extra attacker, Justin Crandall struck back, but it was too little, too late, as the Devils couldn't tie the game and fell to a 5-4 defeat. While a strong post-game talk surely awaits from Pete Russell, for the leadership group, it's a chance for them to address the room first. I know it's a concept of cup game, these games aren't the league. But like, maybe we're too nice in here, but that's just not acceptable, boys. Like, we know it. We dominate most of that game, and yeah, that's great, but like, we lose, lose our heads in the second, we take super penalties, start playing on our own page, like, we can't be doing that. It doesn't matter who the f we play. Like, that's, that's one of my most embarrassing games in this jersey. Like, we should never f lose that game. We gotta have a little more pride, boys. We can't just show up, expect to win a f game. Do, we, do we, anybody disagree? Like, we can't lose that f we can't lose that f Disrespectful, boys. At the end of the day, it's sweaty. It's disrespectful to the guy sat next to you, to the people that travel out here. That's the only word I can think of right now. It's disrespectful. Some guys, you know, lead by by their their play on the ice. Most guys do. Uh, Richie is a is a prime example, and you know, guys that are more vocal. And I just felt that that was a time where. Something need to be needed to be said, and we obviously none of us were happy with with that game. And it was, I think, Joe said it. It was pretty embarrassing um, to go out and form like that. And I think it's important that you hold that accountability in the room first. I think I just said, hopefully, whatever one was thinking. You know, I, I think we just underestimated that team. But I think the bigger picture was, you know, our maybe inconsistency, which was kind of happening a little bit throughout our season as well. You know, it, it doesn't shouldn't matter who we're playing. If we play our game and, and show up, and you know everybody buys in, we should be successful. And I think that was the main message. We just gotta like we, we gotta focus. Like we need to come tomorrow focused, ready to play. I know we respond well, but like keep putting ourselves in these situations. No one's just traveling and everything, but f travel for them too. We gotta f own it, boys. We need to win the next two games, it's one game at a time. But we have to show up and focus for 60 minutes tomorrow. We're all guilty of it. I'm not saying I'm innocent. I'm guilty too. We have to stick together. We can't let you get sideways. We gotta fucking dig each other out. We're losing our minds, help each other out. We can't lose our cool, because we lost it in the second there. We can't fucking lose it to a team like this. You never know what's gonna happen, sure enough. Like it's gotta be one of the last lessons we learned this year, boys. After the defeat the day before, the mood is one of determination on Saturday. The team arrived focused for a meeting against Zemgane from Latvia. With three games in three days, the team get treated for any soreness, while Pete Russell sets out his demands for Game 2. Listen boys, we spoke a lot of so long here, it's simple boys. you got to do whatever it takes to meet it more often from now to the end of it. It's got to come. Next thing is, you know what? Maybe some team pride and some personal pride would be a good thing to f***ing lean upon at times. Everybody, do you know what I mean? Be f***ing proud and f***ing show it tonight. Be disciplined, but play f***ing hard. And the last thing is, you owe me one, boys. I don't say that much, but you f***ing owe me one. 
100% you do. You f***ing owe me one, and I f***ing want it back. You understand? You know what else you owe one? Your f***ing selves to the fans. Let's f***ing go. Come on. Everyone's yeah, got yeah. the key! Sixty minutes to put things right starts now. The Devils come out with a renewed sense of purpose, and it doesn't take long for them to get their reward. Zemgali would strike back, but that wouldn't deter Cardiff who don't deviate from their plan. Late in the second period, a second goal of the weekend from Justin Crandall put the Devils back in front before a second of the game by Cole Sanford extended the lead. It was really nice uh, getting back with Arneil and Uli. We had a good start to the year and obviously a lot of good players, so things were mixed around a bit. And I think we uh, we gel really well together. And. Uh, you know, we've all played uh, in Europe for years, so I think uh, we're maybe a little more accustomed to holding on the puck a little bit longer, like their style of play. Yeah. You know, I was pretty transparent in the offseason. I was pretty frustrated with last year, and, uh, you know, I worked a lot harder this summer and didn't want to just be a part of the team, but be a big part of it. And uh, it's nice we have so many good players, but uh, I don't want to just be uh, one of the guys who might be one of the top guys. Fans back in their seats, including the owners, it's an impressive second period for the Devils. With more of the chances, the Devils strike again. Marcus Crawford fires from distance and Rihard Simanis can't control it as it trickles over the line, forcing the Latvian side into a goaltending change. The change of that did help as the Latvian side keep the Devils at bay for the remainder of the period. Early in the third, Zengali pulled one back but couldn't find much else with Tyler Wall standing firm. And as the Devils found a fist from Paul Uli, it got the team back on track with a win to keep their qualification hopes alive. The win eases the minds of the players as attention is turned quickly to food plans. Yeah, that's just trying to find a breakfast spot. Yeah. Now it's a long day, 8 o'clock a.m. If we, if we eat pastries in the morning, are you kidding me? While the team discuss breakfast, the owners pop in to congratulate them on their performance. Back at the hotel, one table discusses the consistency of their dessert, while on the other, forward Riley Brandt is grilled about his hometown by a couple of his teammates. It's everything in the entire city is close enough. You still know it, but what do you do? Yeah, we have house parties. Yeah, it's awesome. Everybody that's from there will defend trail and say, you know, good things about it. But in the end, there are a lot of good hockey players, a lot of good athletes that have come out of that town. And um, I've lived there my whole life. So I'll always defend it. It's just a, it's a good little city and everyone in there is super close. And, you know, Sammy always chirps me about it, but he's from Vernon and it ain't much better. So it's just a good little town. So just one liquor store? We have a BCL. BCL? We're just probably a liquor store. <laughs> yeah. A BCL. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah there's, some, there's ups and downs for sure. There's <laughs> <laughs> it usually a few more downs than that. <laughs> oh. You know, Bubs is a good sport about it. I think, uh, you know, he gets a hard time most days, um, especially when we're talking about Trail's hometown. Um, so pretty proud to be from there, and uh, we like to we like to uh, take shots at Trail. And... Well, yeah, there's not much to do, but if you like outdoors, man, it's a place to be. You want to play hockey? You want to Oh, yeah. You can have anywhere. Red Mountain to Ski Hill was voted like top three in the world for Ski Hill. What Ski Hill? Red Mountain, it's in Ross. Dude, dude, I swear to God. I swear to God. I swear to God. Maybe North America. Can you even know what Ski Hill is? Yeah, I know what Ski Hill is. I'm not 
Red Mountain Ski Hill. In trail. In Brazen. There's just no way. What do you mean? Yeah, Fat Mountain is full of Australians and go there all the time. Oh, come on, man. That's pretty good. good. <laughs> North America, BC Resort. <laughs> Trying to read up on it, man. I ain't f with it, dude. It was, it was rated something sick a while ago. He just instantly <laughs> top three in the world. Yeah. How do I find this one? Well, just in the little top three BC Resorts in the world. <laughs> <laughs> this was back like, this was years ago. This was a few years ago. This was back in 00. Right? Rank this 7. Is own, it's, this is 09. It's the this same year. It was ready. It was 7 in North America. <laughs> Maybe top 3 was a bit of a burger, but. 7. 7th in North America, not the yeah. world. <laughs> While the players relax, for assistant coach Ewan King, it's a long night of video analysis ahead before the final game against Grenoble. With a later face-off, it's a good chance for the team to see the city and a good chance for Sam Duggar to hijack the camera and interrogate some of his teammates. It, it's important to keep the guys loose at times. I think it's, uh, you know, when to, to switch into game mode, but uh, I think, uh, yeah, I, I probably get a little uh, impulsive at times and just see a camera there and my child brain takes over and, uh, yeah, so uh, have a little bit of fun with that. Benny, why do you get more tired walking than running? I don't know. I can't explain that. <laughs> Um, I'd rather jog than go for a walk. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Get to places faster. <laughs> yeah. Let <Like> Forrest come. How much further is it? With the camera safely returned, it's now time for the team to try and safely return to their hotel. We definitely, my sense direction is. We literally walked dead straight the whole yeah, time. Yeah, right? Then you walked dead straight. Actually, walk right? the whole time. Yeah. Where are we going? Oh, Our hotel is directly that way. If we're going, exactly. if we're going to the that river, we're going, we need to go this way. We're going to the river. I think we're going back. While the players find their way back for fans of the Cardiff Devils, it's a perfect day to explore a new city while traveling to support the team. Yeah, it's um, been a really good weekend. The, it's a really beautiful city and obviously being up here with this view is really amazing and supporting the Devils is always a good atmosphere and the fans are always really supportive of the boys, so it's been a good weekend. It's like obviously the Devils are like our passion at home. Coming on Europe, it's nice to see everyone else getting involved in it in yeah. a really loud atmosphere and also experiencing <coughs> a different team, like experiencing a different style of play with the other teams that are here as well. And we love travelling, so anywhere that we can go and watch the Devils, um, not just in Cardiff but everywhere else is... It's, yeah, great. Devils as a whole, it's like a community, it's not just a team. Like the amount of times we've got behind each other this weekend, getting the fans going, then getting the players going as well. A few times they've looked up at us and give us a nod, it shows that we're, we won like. The team did manage to get back to their hotel safely in time to get their bus for the game against the host Grenoble. And after warm up, the focus shifts to the task at hand. Go, oh, yeah. Push me. Yes, sir. Finish up the weekend the right way. Yes, sir. You walked in yesterday, you had an idea you were ready to play, but we need to be fing ready to play. You know, it's like you've got to understand when you play for a good club, then they expect you to fing find performances at the right time, and we need to find a fing real performance. Like a team performance. And it ain't going to be easy. You know, they're at home and they still have a chance. They've got to beat us by a few, but they still got a chance. You, they're going to be fing desperate. And you have to match that with ready as a team, boys. No bull. We can't run into penalty trouble. We've got to be smart. We've got to think of those positive clips. You understand? Everybody fing going. You should not have to get up for a game like this. Because I ain't your home empty handy. You understand? No fing way. We're not going home empty handy. That's fing broke. We've got to do everything we can to show our hand of a team we're becoming. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Let's fing go here. Who's well, this? Rich. 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 Here we go, boys. We got wheels. Go. Marty. Go. Coxie. Go. Pro. Go. Mosey. Go. Found you in there. For the first time this weekend, Devils fans are outnumbered, but still in fine voice.
It's a feisty first period with chances at both ends, and towards the end of the period, Justin Crandall couldn't slot one in short side, keeping it scoreless after 20 minutes. Coming out for the second though, it didn't take the devils long. After going close towards the end of the first, Crandall was never going to miss a wide open opportunity to break the deadlock and the period's only goal. We are not tired. We are not tired. Well, not. We just have to be great for this period and finish the weekend the right way. Do you understand? Yep. Hey, what do you see, boys? Come hey, on, man, boy. Boy. Shooting at the end of the Devils fans, the crowd do their bit to get the team over the line in the third period. The team go close a couple of times but couldn't extend the lead, but at the other end of the ice, Ben Bowen stands on his head, pitching a 31 save shutout to put the Devils second in the group and through to the final round, much to the delight of Pete Russell and the traveling fans. Ah, hey, on Friday night, I questioned you all. And you know what? You proved you're good people, boys, and you can battle. And you play for each other. Because they're greasy games, those games in Europe. You always look at that, the refs are against you, everything. I thought you were great. Honestly, the last two games, is all I need, all you need. You can win games playing different ways. Does that make sense? But like, that's a good feeling. And you deserve it, honestly, you all deserve it. You've been fucking awesome the last two days. And I mean it, hey, you're absolutely fantastic. I'm happy for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You know what? Maybe we can fucking win it, boys. How about winning it? How does that yeah. After the win, the owners treat the team to a meal, but for some, doesn't necessarily mean the end of the workday. One observation, you guys play connected. Yeah! <laughs> There's no, there's no weekend that doesn't have a bit of adversity, but you guys fought through it, came out f***ing ahead. We're so f***ing proud of you guys yeah. and excited to watch the rest of the season. And the f***ing Cardiff Devils. Yeah. 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 Let's go! Let's go. We love f***ing watching you guys every weekend. Brian and I, we talk every f***ing day, and Todd will tell you the amount of texts that go in our chat group 
through every game. Granted, not all of them positive. <laughs> but we fucking love watching you guys. But the main thing is, you got 300 fans here that gave up like a sizable amount of their disposable income to come here and watch you guys. Like it's humbling. And you guys got to think about that when you play through the rest of the season. This is why we do it. We've got this great city, we've got these great fans, and everybody gets treated well. Like, don't take it lightly. Like, it's it's something like, for guys that have played in other cities, in other leagues, like, it's not normal. So, you know, take it in, and let's f***ing win this f***ing league. Because we got the team to do it, we got the coach to do it, we got the staff to do it. So let's f***ing win, should we? Yes, sir! Yeah!